In order to convince you of these two inconvenient truths, I have to debunk and explode for you three general myths, three belief systems that have basically overtaken all of modern medicine over the past 50 years. And I have to do it in basically an hour flat. So um, please give me your attention as we go through each one of these myths, and I will dismantle each one piece by piece, limb from limb, until finally just blood on the floor. Here we go. Myth number one, it's about obesity. After all, everyone says it's about energy balance. Everyone says we eat too much and we exercise too little. Well, that's true. We do eat too much. We do exercise too little. The question is not, do we do that? The question is, why do we do that? And is that the real problem? Or is that actually an epiphenomenon? Is that something that comes along with the problem as opposed to being the cause of the problem? And that's the myth that needs to be exploded. All right, and we're gonna take that apart you know, piece by piece. So on this slide, we have a Venn diagram of the entire adult US population, 240 million adults, 30% obese, BMI over 30, 70% normal weight, BMI under 30, all right? Everyone listening to this talk today is in one of the two circles and you know who you are, all right? And they are mutually exclusive circles. Now, the standard mantra from the doctors and the dietitians and the Institute of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, and the Surgeon General, and the White House, and Congress, and the food industry, is the following. 80% of these obese individuals, 80% of 30% of 240 million, these 57 million people here, they're sick. They're fat, and they're sick, and they're sick because they're fat, and if they would only just diet and exercise, we could solve this problem. That's what they say. Garbage. Total trash. Uh, immediately disprovable. And it's on the slide. How is it disprovable? Well, it is true that 80% of 30% are metabolically ill. I don't argue that. That is true. However, what that also means is that 20% of 30% are not. They are metabolically healthy. We have a name for them called MHO, metabolically healthy obese. We actually study these patients to try to figure out how come they didn't get sick. Conversely, 40% of the normal weight population have the exact same diseases as do the obese. Normal weight people get type two diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia, fatty liver disease, polycystic ovarian disease too. Now they get it at a lower rate, true. They get it at 40% instead of 80%. So obesity is a risk factor. And I don't argue that, that is true. But if normal weight people get it too, how can it be about behavior? This looks more like exposure. This looks more like cholera or influenza or COVID-19 for that matter, where people who are sick and people who are not sick are actually in the same family or in the same household, all right? And when you do the math, 40% of 70% of 240 million, turns out there are 67 million thin sick people calling the 57 million fat sick people the problem. And when you do the math on the two of them together, that's more than half the US population. And that's what makes it a public health crisis. Because if it was just the obese, you could say, well, their problem. But everyone's at risk. Now, not at the same level but everyone's at risk. And that's what makes it a public health problem. And I will prove this to you again in a different way. Here we have uh, a CT scans through the abdomens of two equally weighted people. Notice trunk fat, 12.8, 12.8, okay? One's healthy, one's sick. Which one's sick, A or B? Answer, B. B is sick, and the reason is because A, He's got 
subcutaneous or big butt fat. You can see here, a set, set, set subcutaneous adipose tissue. This is cosmetically undesirable, but metabolically inert. This is actually where your body wants to put extra energy to keep yourself healthy, to be protected. This is metabolically healthy obese right here. This guy, on the other hand, down here, B, he's got fat all around his organs. You can see that intra-abdominal fat. See there. And that's the big problem. That's the bad fat. And we have a name for this. It's called TOFI, T-O-F-I. Thin on the outside, fat on the inside, real medical term, 1,500 Medline citations coined by Dr. Jimmy Bell, a neuroimager at University College London. So my question to you sitting here right now listening to this lecture is, are you a TOFI? Do you know? Does your doctor know? If your doctor knows, why hasn't your doctor told you? And if your doctor did know, what would they do about it anyway? These are the questions that have to be answered before we can actually get healthier. And I'll prove it to you a third way. Here we have an MRI fat fraction map. You can see the fat very easily here. Here's a normal obese person. You notice the big glove handles here on the side. But what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this guy's liver right here, dark. See it? 2.6% fat. This is perfectly fine. This is a metabolically healthy obese person. This guy will probably outlive you. Now, here we have what you more likely see. Obesity, sure. But take a look at this guy's liver. 24% liver fat. This guy's got fatty liver disease. This guy's got metabolic syndrome. This guy's going to die. Now, take a look at this guy here. Notice, no obesity, normal amounts of subcutaneous fat here. But take a look at his liver. 23% liver fat. Thin sick fat sick, fat healthy. The point is, it's not the fat you can see that counts. It's the fat you can't. And you don't know if you have it or not. Now, it is true that most of the time, those people with the fat you can see also have the fat you can't. That's true. I don't argue that, but it's not, auto not an automatic. In fact, we have Fat healthies, and we have thin six. So which are you? <laughs>